Hey y'all! If you're based in the US, happy late Thanksgiving. I hope it was great. And if you're based abroad, I hope you're having a great November. I can't believe the month is already almost over. Oh my gosh, time is moving, I feel, especially quickly this year. Um, today, I'm here to share just a standard podcast. So I'll show what I finished in the last month, what I'm currently working on, and just a few acquisitions. So let's get into it. Thanks for joining me. Um, I will be drinking a little ginger red chai in this cute cat mug. So the cat is on a ball of yarn and it's, I call it a Christmas mug cause it's got like Christmas colors. I don't really know if it is, but enjoying my gingerbread chai and some grapes on the side as we get into this podcast. Um, before we begin, I am wearing my Athens cardigan V-neck. I completed this probably a month ago maybe two. Um, it's an all over cabled cardigan, nice moss stitch panels. I did heavily modify it. Um, not heavily, but the sleeves were supposed to be different and it's knit pretty off gauge. Um, and it's knit in knitting for olive merino in the color copper and drops brushed, sil brushed alpaca silk in the color 24 rust. I also, I just took off one. I'm wearing a pair of hand knit socks today. These are the, I believe, Wildflower socks. I'll have the name up on the screen. Um, or no, the Florist Shorties, that's what they're called. The Florist Shorties socks by Larkspur Knits. And I knit mine up in this color, Tea in the Garden by Salty Blonde Fibers. And I knit these up in July. Um, all right, let's get into it. So, start off with finished objects. Let me grab the first one that I finished since last time we've spoken. It's this pair of socks um, in a nice self-patterning yarn. This is Drops Fable in the lavender print. Um, and the pattern is the cardamom tea socks by, I believe it's, it's excuse me, Emily Weller. Um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. I really enjoyed working it. It's pretty easy, um, nice ribbing around the leg and on the top of the foot. And then a nice motif that it's kind of hard to see in this pattern, but there is kind of this nice, here, nice little garter broken rib um, motif in the middle. So yeah, great pair of socks. And I am knitting these for, or I knit these for my um, boyfriend's mom for Christmas. By the way, <laughs> if you know me in real life, I would suggest not watching this podcast until after Christmas. I would greatly appreciate it because I I do have a fair amount of gift knits that I'm planning on sharing. So just catch this one in January. Okay, love you all if you're watching, but go away. Okay, anyways, yes, that's my first finished object. I know that my boyfriend's mom does not watch my channel or my podcast, so glad I can share that one, but yeah, get out of here, anyone else. Um, cool. Yeah, that was the first thing. And then I'm forgetting the order here. I think I did this one next, yeah. Next thing I completed, and we're kind of rapid firing here, is this hat uh, for my mom for Christmas. Um, it is the Iris hat um, by Sari Nordland. It's top down hat, so it's got a little bit of a hole. I really like the increase lines. I think that it's very, very nice. Um, and I knit this in a DK white one of a kind skein from Apothecary Fibers um, that I got in like a mystery thing. It's a really nice hat. It's very slouchy and I probably could have made it a little bit longer, but honestly it's so big that like I think that it ends up pretty nice. I also put a little heart logo on that. Okay want to wear it like this um it's a little bit big for me but my mom's got curly hair and a bigger head than I do I almost always knit the children's large in hats for myself so I'm a very bad gauge but it's a little bit big and a little bit short but I think that I knit it to okay so I knit the length to the sorry Nordland dimensions I did add another increase repeat which I shouldn't have done I just 
could not visualize the hat fitting on my head, like making a top down hat, it's kind of tricky because um, it seems so small when you reach the end of your increases, uh, but it would have fit if I had just stuck with um, the normal increase amount, um, but it's got a little extra ease, which hopefully will help uh, her to be able to take the hat on and off really quickly without it messing up her hair too much. Um, she has pretty curly hair, so I think having a little extra room in the hat is not going to be the worst thing. Um, but it's also like very slouchy, um, which is nice and cozy, but I think in the future I would like to figure out how to get a little bit more structure in my hand knit hats. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's done and it's nice. It's gonna be a good Christmas gift. And do I have anything else to say? I don't think so. I enjoyed knitting this. I think I'm going to make another for myself. Um, and I really enjoyed this yarn. It's super soft and the speckles were really fun to work up. So yeah, that's the iris hat. Um, next, I have another cardigan. Uh, so I wore this in my last video. So if you watched my last little knit and chat, you saw this, but this is the Mauricia cardigan by Vert and Rose. Um, I am so excited to have finished this. I feel like I was talking about it for so long. Um, I've been planning on making this cardigan forever. And yeah, I love the finished product. I'm so excited I'm going to the Nutcracker last week or next week, sorry. Um, I was kind of in a knitting hole before this where I was knitting for like three hours straight to try to finish one of my objects that I'll show you. Um, so forgive any, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little discombobulated. So please forgive any um, corrections I need to make when I'm speaking. Um, but yeah, I'm going to the Nutcracker next week and I'm going to wear this and I think that it's going to be perfect at the Nutcracker. The nice soft pinky with the beautiful little cables and the buttons kill me. There are these um, little flowers. So cute. So I think I'm going to wear this and a skirt of some kind uh, or maybe over a dress. I haven't totally decided yet, but ah, so exciting. Um, yes, the... Mauricia Cardigan, Vert and Rose, and I used two strands of Yarnalia Joy in the color Rose Gold. It's a 100% baby alpaca lace weight yarn. Um, it's pretty affordable. The color range um, is quite small. I bought this almost probably a year ago, uh, this yarn, and I made my um, sweater number 15 out of it. And then I didn't fully understand how to buy yarn for a pattern yet so I ended up buying basically double of what I need so I now have knit two garments out of the Yarnalia Joy and still have like two 25 gram balls left so yeah um kind of messed up there I'm a little sick of the color now so I won't make another garment with it for a while but that's the first yarn or the main yarn and then I also use the Fiber Spates Cumulus which is another lace weight um kind of fluffy it's an alpaca based fluffy yarn um, and I used the color Fig which is my cat's name so that was really sweet. It was the color I would have chosen anyways um, to match with the Yarnalia rose gold color but I like that it's my cat's name in the cardigan. So yeah this is very cute, um, very warm. I feel very classy in it. Um, it looks nice unbuttoned. I feel like I could do the nice little just button the top button and have it open thing so um, very happy with this pattern and with my yarn choice. It's so drapey. So, yeah, I feel like I'm moving really quickly, but that's not the worst thing. Um, the next thing that I completed is this hat. Um, this is the Tide Knots hat. Um, I'm not going to try to say it's Justina and I'm not going to try to say her last name, um, but it's also a free pattern on Ravelry and this is another one of my gift knits. So I am gifting this to uh, my dad's girlfriend and it's beautiful. Um, it's all over cabled and then the yarn is the Malabrigo Rios in the color Cum Cumparsita. Um, yeah, it's really pretty. And it fits really nicely. It grew a lot in blocking. I was kind of worried at first, but now it fits quite nicely. I think normally the way it's styled in the pattern is like this, um, but I personally would not wear my hat like that. So 
I'm going to give it with the brim folded. She can choose if she wants to wear it unfolded or not, but I think that, you know, I prefer kind of a more tight fitting hat um, and you can still see a lot of the cables. So yeah, this is a really nice pattern. Highly recommend knitting it. I mean, it's free and um, it used just a little bit less of the one skein of Rios. Um, it is a DK weight pattern. Um, and so I was kind of taking a risk with going up to the Rios is technically a worsted weight yarn, uh, but I'd say it's a pretty light worsted. Um, and I still have really great cable definition and the hat did not turn out any bigger. So I'm glad I actually went up the yarn. Um, I was kind of taking a risk since I am normally a loose knitter and then adding in a bigger yarn um, was a little bit stressful, but um, it worked out for me. It, you know, the, I mean, this the cables look so crispy. Um, and yeah, the color is great. And I have a little bit of the yarn left over still. So if you are looking to make a one skein, really nice kind of DK to worsted weight hat, I highly recommend this pattern. It's so pretty, so cool. Um, and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the stitch or the cable repeat was not that hard to learn either. I think it was like a, I don't want to speak on it now. I think it was a 27 row repeat, but there were a lot of repetitive steps. I think I could kind of split it up into like nine stitch repeats or nine row repeats. So highly recommend knitting it and enjoying it. It's very sweet and I'm excited to gift it for Christmas. Um, all right, my last finished object is very exciting. Um, I don't want to show this for too long, but this is the superlative sweater um, by Samantha Guerin. Um, I hope I'm I hope I'm saying that last name correctly, but the information will be down below as well. Um, I knit this as a sample knit for Explorer Knits, so these are two unreleased colors. Allie of Explorer Knits did tell me that I can kind of show little sneak peeks um, of the color. I just don't want to show it for too long, but. Here is a little bit of the sweater. It's really nice all over boucle yarn. And then with um, ribbing on the neck and cuffs in their Rockies DK base of Explorer Knits. And then a nice um, folded hem, which I'd never been done before also in the Rockies DK. I'm not gonna share the color names, um, but it's their boucle base and their DK base. And this was so fun to work up. I worked this whole sweater up in 10 days. You can see it's pretty small. Um, it's definitely, it has negative ease on me. It's not intended to have, it's not intended to fit me. I knit it for Allie who, you know, is not my size, a little bit smaller. So it made it go really quickly. The sweater was done. It did make me panic a few times where I was measuring it like five, 10 times just to make sure that it was meeting the correct measurements um, because I was so worried about how small it looked. Um, but it meets the measurements in the pattern. It meets Allie's measurements. So I think that we are, we are good and I'm excited to send this sweater off soon. Um, it's It was really fun to work up. The boucle, I will say, I don't think that I want to make myself anything in boucle after working this up. It is a little bit finicky. Um, there were a few times where it was hurting my hands. It just, um, it's very hard to see your stitches and sometimes while you're knitting, like your needle goes through one of the loops because the way boucle works, it's a bunch of little loops on your main strand. And so sometimes my knitting needle would go through one of those other loops and then I'd have to kind of mess around with it a little bit. Um, but overall, a weaving and ends was also really hard, but the nice thing was, even though it was hard to get a nice woven and end, you didn't have to weave in your ends very well because the boucle really sticks to itself and really like hides anything. So at least there was that. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, I'd say I enjoyed the process of knitting the sweater. Um, and it was fun to experiment with boucle, but I think that I don't need a garment in boucle because it was a little bit more annoying to work up picking up stitches specifically. Oh, picking, oh, this is a drop shoulder. So I had to pick up so many stitches for the neckline and the sleeves and to connect the front and back. 
it is so hard because you just can't see anything. Um, which is nice in the end because then you can't see any mistakes, but I would prefer to not make mistakes on a garment that I am giving to someone else. So it was a little, a little testing, but now like right here is where, what is that? Right here is the seam where I picked up stitches and you cannot see it because boucle magic. You can only tell that the seam's there because the stitches switch directions. So that is pretty magic that, um, you know, things kind of disappear in the boucle. So it m allows you to be a little bit messier in your knitting. Um, but I still don't like being a messy knitter, but it's hard to not be when you're working with boucle. So yeah, I enjoyed that sweater. I finished it the day after Thanksgiving. Um, I knit basically a whole sleeve on Thanksgiving day and just had 10 rows of ribbing left the next day. So I really enjoyed my Thanksgiving. It was very chill um, and working on that sweater. So those are my finished objects. I have, my first whip is kind of a finished object, um, kind of not. So this is Toad, a frog and Toad. I finished him 30 minutes ago. Um, this was so hard. <laughs> um, he, I bought this pattern. It is the Frog and Toad pattern by Frog and Cast. Um, it's a great pattern, very well thought out, and it includes instructions for making Toad, making Frog, who is his friend, and making Frog and Toad's clothes. That is so much. I am making this for one of my friends for Christmas who loves Frog and Toad. She has like a tarot card, the lover's tarot card tattooed on her leg and it's got Frog and Toad on it instead of a normal lover's tarot card. Um, like she seriously loves Frog and Toad. She has earrings with like the book put inside them, like sealed in resin, loves Frog and Toad. And so since I started knitting, I've been like, I have to make this pattern for her one day. And I feel like I have the skills to, obviously I made Toad. Um, I have the skills to make frog and toad, but oh my god. He was hard. Um, he, I mean, he, he wasn't the hard, like, I'd say more tedious. It's, he's all knit on DPNs. There's a lot of increases and decreases. You are holding a DK weight yarn on a US1. Um, so you're holding US1 DPNs with DK weight yarn, and I specifically chose um, a Peruvian Highland wool yarn, so it's pretty fluffy, which um, helps the fabric be dense enough to be filled, but also just meant it was very hard on my hands. It was very hard to do increases and decreases. Um, there's short rows in the pattern and working the like wrapped stitches. It's kind of the wrapped kind of short rows and working those in this super thick, super dense yarn <laughs> was a little bit tedious. Um, I definitely broke a DPN. Um, just one. I was kind of surprised I only broke one, but I still have frog and all the clothes to do, so still time to break another. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's really cool. Look, I made his eyes. His eyes look a little bit crazy, but I think that adds to him. Um, I still need to add his little embroidered frown. Um, I just, I was kind of trying to decide if I didn't if I wanted to just leave him without, but I think that maybe he needs a, a mouth. Um, his little hands, look at that. Crazy. Feet, the legs are my favorite. Look at those, they look like frog legs. Amazing, this little calf killed me, so cute. Um, so yeah, I made him earlier. I am making both of them out of Knit Picks palette, so you can see Toad's color. Um, it's the colorway Brindle Heather, um, and then I will make frog out of this color a little bit of toad yarn on it. Um, this is the color Forest Heather. So I will make toad as well, um, or frog as well. Now that I have not been working on frog for, or toad for like an hour, feeling a little bit better about him. So I will make his friend and all their clothes. But oh, clearly I really like my friend because this is hard. Um, yeah, it's just so many little steps and like, I kind of feel like I'm gonna 
I can already feel the second, I've been calling it second frog syndrome. Like you get second sock syndrome where you really don't want to make the second sock and I feel like I'm having second frog syndrome in which I really don't want to cast on frog. I feel like toad, like why can't I be done? But they're a pair, I can't just gift toad, especially I can't just gift naked toad, I need to make frog and I need to make their clothes. I could just gift naked frog and toad, but their clothes are cute and their clothes will be easier. It's at least a fingering on the US ones and no like short rows, I think. Um, but yeah, he's cute. It was fun. I'm not done yet. Um, I'm taking the night off though. We're gonna, I'm gonna cast on something new because I can't, can't do it tonight. But there you have it. There's Frog and Toad. And then, did you hear my hip? <laughs> um, maybe I'll leave that in, probably. Um, and then I also, oh, it's not in here. Sorry, no, one sec. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm going through it today. Um, I also, my last um, video I was making this, but I figured I'd show the finished little thing. So this is the tiny gilded Christmas jumper pattern. It's a free pattern as well by Fable Knits. Um, I think it's Fable, maybe it's Fabelle. Um, but yeah, Fable Knitwear and so cute. It's this tiny little jumper. Um, I will be using these as little gift tags for just a few members of my family. I'm not making that many, um, but I am going to make at least one more, maybe two um, of these little tiny jumpers and then you embroider a little letter on the front. So it's a J. Um, I maybe need to go back and re-embroider it because I feel like it's a lot smaller than I wanted, but my little J. And I've just been using scrap yarn. So this yarn is the um, Emma's Yarn Hella Hank in the color Arches. So it's very cute, very, very cute. Um, and I will also probably make one out of this yarn, which is Jada Wu Designs in the colorway, the Great Pacific Northwest. I got this in Seattle um, over the summer. So yeah, those are kind of my two whips at the moment. I think I might cast on another gift hat tonight for my dad. Um, because I, I don't want to work on any small gauge DPNs. I don't want to see a DPN for a few days. Um, I need something in the round. So I think I might cast on the hat I'm planning on making for my dad. Although that's a cabled project. I don't know. All of my knits for the next, all of my, all of my Christmas knits are a little bit complex at this point. I've left, I've done all the easy ones. I made these socks, which were easy, this hat, which was so easy, and this hat, which was so easy. Well, I mean, this one was a little bit more complex, but still pretty easy. And now I have a pair of colorwork socks, frog and toad, and another cabled hat left. So I could have chosen easier gift knits, but we're here. I've already committed. I've already bought the yarn. God, I just knit the projects. And normally I like more complex knits. I'm just, I'm just very tired after, after my toe debacle today. Um, but yeah, those are all of my finished objects and whips. Um, I'm gonna go into acquisitions right now. I know some people don't always want to hear acquisitions, so if you don't want to see what I've bought, it's it's a pretty small amount. Um, then I'll see you later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, but if you want to stay around, let's get into it. First of all, I'm glad I told everyone to leave because I haven't, I haven't been using this project bag. This is a project bag by the Blue Rabbit House. Um, she's based in the, I think the UK, but maybe Northern Europe. I think, yeah, I think just Northern Europe, but she's based <laughs> um, across the Atlantic Ocean from me. And I ordered 
a tote bag in this print, which has a little frog on it and he lives in a mushroom. It's called the Henry bag. Um, so I ordered a tote bag for the same friend of gifting frog and tote to. You can see a theme I'm going for frogs this Christmas, I guess. Um, but I wanted to order that from her. And then I decided, you know, I'm paying shipping. I might as well get myself a bag. I also got my mom a, um, a project bag like this one. So um, this is her project bag. It's very nice. It's got two pockets on the inside and a strap on the outside um, and drawstring closes. And they're all hand illustrated. And then, you know, Blue Rabbit House, I think her name's Eva. Um, hand illustrates all of these and then prints them on bags. Um, and I think either she hand sews them or it's, 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 it's a very small business. Um, and a very creative business. So I'm not sure if she is the one that then sews them together or, um, you know, she sends them off to have that done, but she makes all of the designs um, and they always have little animals doing cute activities. So I got myself this frog one because I just, I don't know, I loved the colors. I love the mushroom houses. I got my mom one that has a chicken on it. Um, a little hen, and then I got my friend a tote bag in the same print. So those two will be Christmas gifts, and I've been hiding this bag. Um, I got it maybe two weeks ago I got it, and I've been hiding it because I don't want um, my good friend to see or my mom to see it because I've talked about this business to both of them already, and I, <laughs> I don't want them to know that I bought anything from them because I think that'll give away that I bought them things from them. Um, but I decided Frog and Toad, it was too perfect to not make Frog and Toad in my frog bag. So brought it out and I've been thoroughly enjoying using it. And then I should have moved these over, but the rest of my acquisitions. This is the yarn that I knit, well, one of the strands of yarn that I knit this out of. I still have, I think, three balls of it left. Um, so it's the Cumulus by Fiber Spates, 74% Surrey, 26% Silk. It's a very nice yarn. I highly recommend this if you are sensitive to mohair. Um, it's like a little bit denser, I think, than mohair, but I thought it was really nice to work with and gives a really nice drape. And again, the color is fig, which makes me so happy. Um, so I bought that. And while I was buying that, I, I've i really been wanting some Hedgehog Fiber sock yarn. I have a skein that I got in a mystery dip or a Lucky Dip mystery bundle that I really don't like the colors of. And so I decided that while I was ordering from Wool & Co, um, for the Fiber Spates Cumulus, they sell a lot of hedgehog fibers and let me just get a skein of it. And so I did. This is the colorway Dune and I really like it. Um, so it's got pinks, um, tan, and blue. And I'm excited to work this up probably early in the year. So there's that. Um, and then around Halloween, uh, my one of my local yarn shop shops was having kind of a trick or treat thing where if you went in you um on halloween or the weekend of halloween you got um a little skein of yarn with purchase so i went in and because uh, i love i love a free thing they were calling it trick-or-treating too and i love i love participating in fun activities so um i went down and i picked up um two balls of knitting for all of merino these are both going to be discontinued colorways and so they were on sale at my local yarn store um this is the colorway dusty aqua and i got one of these to put in um a stripe pipe sweater by veronica lindberg or kudu vakika that i am planning on making so got this one um i'm slowly acquiring yarn for that it's not a it's not going to be next week that i cast it on um, it'll probably be, you know, sometime mid next year based on when I get enough fingering or DK weight leftovers or happen to be going to a yarn store and get um, a ball. So I got this color um, that same weekend. My mom also gave me her leftovers from 
Um, she made a Sophie scarf out of this, which is the knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway Dusty Artichoke. Um, and I have just under 50 grams in this, which I will also put in the stripe pipe sweater. And then I also, while I was there, this color is being discontinued, so it was on sale. It was, I think everything was like 10% off, so I was getting it for $9 instead of 10. Um, this is the colorway Wild Berries, and I actually got, well, I got two of them at the time, and then I ended up going back and getting another um, to make a twist loop top by Other Loops. Um, it's a really nice tank top with cables down the front. Um, I recently saw Pages and Pearls Hannah make her version, which is in a really nice um, kind of pumpkin-y orange color, and it really inspired me to want to cast it on as soon as it gets a little warmer and I love this color so Hannah's knitting it in the merino I'm um, knitting for all of merino and so I knew it would work and so I got three skeins of it to make a nice little high neck cabled tank top so very exciting and then my last yarny acquisition is this um English garden which is actually I think I said tea in the garden earlier but it's English garden it is the same yarn that I'm wearing on my feet. Um, I did not realize that when I picked this yarn up. Uh, Salty Blonde fi Fibers um, is one of my local hand dyers and one of my favorite hand dyers and she had a trunk show at uh, one of my local yarn stores so I went there to get yarn just to go in um, my sock swap box to send to my sock swap partner uh, which I'm so excited I'm sending that out later this week. I'll take a picture of it um, and post it at some point, share it somewhere of what I put in the box, but I don't want to share it now um, in case my partner is watching and don't want to ruin anything for her. So yeah, I went there just to get the <laughs> sock set, um, but of course I had to leave with something for myself. This is in uh, Ryan's Cashmere Luxe Finger Way, so it's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and it's super wash. And it's so pretty. I don't know, I think the base makes it a little bit different. It's slightly more yellow than the one I'm wearing or the yarn, the yarn that my socks are. And I just really like this yarn, um, this color. So I think it's fine that I got it again. I kind of later was like, oops, but you know, now I can make a nice, I don't know what I'm gonna make out of it yet, but nice scarf or something out of this yarn um because it's just so pretty and yeah those are my yarny acquisitions um the other things that I've gotten kind of knitting related this month first of all I got a new kind of cabinet to store all my yarn in uh if you followed me on Instagram at all you'll have seen that um, one of my cats, Kepler, is just a menace when it comes to yarn. Um, he loves playing with it. So he kept trying to break into my old yarn cabinet, which just was, it was a Calyx unit from Ikea, if you're familiar, but it was essentially like a bunch of open um, cubbies um, that I had baskets in to store my yarn in and he kept figuring out how to get into them. I kept getting new things. So I went from just like rope baskets to um, metal bins to finally plastic lidded bins inside rope baskets pushed really far in. And he still every single time figured out how to get into them. Um, and so I was on a trip a couple weeks ago. I went on a little girls weekend up to Uray, Colorado, which was, so beautiful and so nice. And while I was there, my, my boyfriend sent me this video of just all of my yarn on the floor. Um, a lot of it played with. Um, luckily there were so many skeins of yarn that my cat didn't fully know what to do. And so he, a lot of them were just like bit once or kind of roughed around, but nothing was ruined because he had so much to play with. So kind of a blessing that he got into all of it and not just like one of the bags or something um but yeah after that I decided I really needed a new yarn storage so I'll insert a photo of it I'm staring at it right now but um it's just another Ikea unit that is fully <laughs> closed and it's bringing me a lot of joy that I know my yarn is safe and it has drawers which has been really nice for storage um so yeah weird thing and then finally 
Um, I've been making stitch markers lately and so I figured I would just show some of them. So this is one little set of little mushroom on a glass bead and these little glass beads hanging down. I've been using lobster, or in the past I've always used lobster clasp closer, closures. I forget what these ones are called, um, but they're nice. They're actually earrings, um, but they nicely close like that. Um, so they can be used both as um, kind of stitch markers on your like beginning of round markers on your work and then as progress keepers if you would like. Um, and then I also, here's another one I made recently. This is a counting one. Um, I love this one. It's got little hearts um, that you put on your needles. I think it goes, it fits up to a US six. Um, and then in between all the hearts, I have little kind of seed beads and I have next to odd numbers are a little queer pink one and next to evens is a little clear blue one. And then this nice little rubber heart at the end. So I've really been enjoying making stitch markers. And yeah, those are some of the ones I've made. I recently got some more supplies as far as little glass beads to make some more. So I'm excited to do that um, as well. But yeah. Those are all of my kind of knitting related things. I try to give a recommendation um, at the end of all my videos and trying to think as far as media recommendations. I don't really have um, media recommendations. I, I'm i watching Game of Thrones right now. You don't need me to recommend Game of Thrones to you. A million people already have, but it's good. Um, and then I just read I gotta be honest, I just read what is free on Kindle. I have Kindle Unlimited, so I just read whatever is free on there. So I think that my recommendations don't have a lot of value because I'm just recommending what I got free. Um, so no books. I haven't been listening to audiobooks either. Um, I mean, I can recommend some channels I've been watching a lot. If you've never seen Laura Penrose of Penrose Knits, I highly recommend you check her out. Um, Vlogmas is about to start for her, so that'll be an exciting time to discover her. Um, and then I've already mentioned Hannah of Pages and Pearls. Uh, she is wonderful and um, I really enjoy her channel. She just recently moved um, from New York to, I don't know where in England, I think Cambridge, but I very well could be wrong. Um, but somewhere in England and um, so she's been a little bit less active lately but she is just really really lovely um, and yeah those are my two channel recommendations and then I'd also say I've really been enjoying um, vas a Vaseline stick I got. Um, I got this stick of Vaseline that is like um, Cocoa Radiance Vaseline stick and it's just normal kind of petroleum jelly aquaphor Vaseline um, but instead of in a tube, it comes in a solid stick that you can kind of roll up like deodorant. Um, so it's really nice and easy to apply um, without getting it all over your hands. And then the one that I got also has a little bit of um, cocoa butter in it and a little bit of like biodegradable glitter in it. I don't know if it's actually biodegradable, something that's shiny. And so I actually have been using it as a highlighter um, and I've been loving it. So you can see like very shiny right there because I have a little bit of the Vaseline stick on and it's been wonderful. I have really dry skin. Um, I get eczema a lot in the winter. So I just kind of have been rubbing it on my eyelids every morning um, to help lock in some moisture, especially because I get a lot of eczema on my eyelids. Um, so I've I rub it there um, every morning so that I don't get eczema, but it also looks like a highlighter and kind of helps brighten my face. So I've really been enjoying that product. And if you have dry skin, um, but also would like to look nice with all of your hydrating stuff on, I highly recommend it. Um, it also is just like a really nice way to do your makeup because it takes a second to like swipe it on um, and it lasts a really long time. So yeah, those are my recommendations, um, acquisitions, whips, finished objects. Thank you so much for watching. I was hoping this episode would be a little bit shorter, but I see that we're already about at 40 minutes. So oops, I don't think I'll ever have a short episode, honestly. Um, but yeah, 
thanks for being here and I hope that you are having a great November and I'll catch you again next week and when I next upload it'll be December already. Crazy. Okay. Bye!